Hello YouTube, I'm Vince White. I'm an employment attorney and today we are speaking about how to file a case with the New York City Commission on Human Rights. Um, down below in the doobie doo, I'm going to link their uh, flow chart about the life of a complaint, like what happens after you file. Excuse me. I'm also going to link their video, which describes like how to file and what they claim happens after you file. Now, you might say, why, Vince, why are you making a video if they are made, already made a video on how to do this? Some of the things that they say in their video are, are simply not true. <laughs> um, the most important of which is they claim you're going to be speaking with an attorney, one of their attorneys. In my, and it's my opinion that's not true. But in my experience, that is almost never the case, that you speak with an attorney they provide. Um, generally, you're speaking with non-attorneys in my experience. Now, you might tell me that's different. You might tell me I'm wrong. You might tell me a different experience. I would be thrilled to hear that because I, I wish they were providing you attorneys, right? So down below, essentially, I'm going to provide the, the phone number that you have to call to file a claim. This is a little different than what you might be used to with the New York City Commission. Or, pardon me, the New York State Division of Human Rights, because the New York City Commission, um, you got to call in. And then they appear to be claiming they're still doing in-person interviews. I've heard this is not the case. I've heard they're not actually doing in-person interviews, probably because of COVID. Um, so I think there's going to be some kind of virtual process by which you're interviewed and, and you kind of give the specifics of your claim and turn over the documentation for your claim. Now, the flowchart is quite accurate. Generally, that it touches upon all the things to expect after you file your claim, right? The, the staff of the a city commission, they're going to be looking for more documentation. They're going to be questioning you about your timeline. They're going to want text messages, emails, your schedules from work, a anything you have that supports your claim. They're going to want to see. And what they're trying to do is decide if they're going to give you a hearing or not. Right in the city commission, that's that's going to be determined by a finding of probable cause. If you receive probable cause for your case, that means you're going to get a hearing in front of an ALJ, an administrative law judge. What is an administrative law judge? Well, it's a hyper specified, a hyper narrow field of focus judge, right? So a judge who really only knows about employment law, who has probably worked in employment law all of her or his life has a depth of knowledge about this field and only hears cases of this kind. Workplace discrimination, public accommodation, housing discrimination, probably that's it in the city commission for their judges. And essentially, if you get probable cause, you get to put on your case in front of that person. And the city commission will sort of kind of give you an attorney to do that for you. But in reality, you should definitely think of that responsibility as yours, right? If you get an amazing attorney from the city commission, great. And all your work that you did putting on your case will be something that will be helpful to that attorney, right? And your collaboration with that attorney will make your case that much stronger and raise your chance that you're going to win. If you get a less than amazing attorney, you're going to be really glad you did the footwork yourself, the, the groundwork, right? The foundational work. You're going to be glad that you're ready to go and you can kind of be like, hey, attorney, ask this. Show them this. Kind of piece by piece, right? Now, you might say, well, that's what I want to hire an attorney for. Yeah, you can. You absolutely can. Attorneys are a little bit expensive. This video is meant for people who want to represent themselves, right? People who don't want to go to the expense of hiring an attorney to handle a case like this. Totally get it. It's not for everyone. Maybe you want to keep your whole settlement, right? Like, I get it. I get it. And, and the point of this video is to help you kind of navigate that. If you have an attorney, you don't have to worry about any of this. They're going to take care of every step of the way for you. Uh, it's going to be much, much easier. Now, if you don't get probable cause, that means um, you're not going to get a hearing. You're done in the city commission. And on their own flow chart, it's worth noting that from the no probable cause bubble, the next step is an appeal, 
right? They're like, oh, if you don't like our finding, you can go appeal it with the uh, state Supreme Court. Sure. Um, the arrow that's drawn after the Supreme Court, the only um, path from that bubble, from the appeal process bubble on their org chart, points to dismissal. That is, that is an unconscious... Uh, statement of what they think is going to happen if you appeal your case. They think it's just going to be dismissed. They think that so strongly that on their own flowchart, they did not introduce an option by which your appeal could go well and you then get a hearing. Has it ever happened? Yes, it has. Do I think it'll happen for you? Statistically speaking, no. No, I do not. So if you, if you lose the probable cause finding in the city commission, make no mistake about it. Your, your case has been impaired. It's not good. Now, you might be able to pull a right to sue letter from the EEOC, the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, if you cross-filed. If you cross-filed. So, let this be your warning. Cross-file. Right? Don't let some random bureaucrat Toss your claims out. Don't let it happen. It's not good. Keep your options open. There's no reason not to cross-file. You can file at the federal level, city level, simultaneously. And if you don't like what happens in the city level and the city agency, you can then talk about pursuing your federal claims with an attorney. Okay? Now you've been harmed. The case is not what it once was. Bad things have happened to the case. But there might be something that can be rescued in that scenario. Okay? I'm going to include the, the phone numbers down below. I'm going to include the flow chart. I'm going to include the video on how to file. Um, and ask questions. I'm going to check the comments. If I left something out here that would be useful, let me know. I want to provide that information for you. I want to help, right? If you're representing yourself, I want to help. Don't call me. <laughs> <laughs> but like ask the questions here right because i can't help everybody everybody who calls me like i can't help everybody right it's gonna be an hour-long phone call uh, we get a lot of phone calls you know 50 60 100 calls a day sometimes right so um i can't just hop on the phone and, and drop an hour helping you out personally because you don't want to pay an attorney but I will create these videos. I will try to create public responses to your comments, kind of answering your questions. Remember to be careful about your personal information on the internet. You don't have to identify yourself necessarily to be asking questions on this video in the comments. Um, and I wish you luck. I wish you luck. If you're the victim of workplace discrimination, or for that matter, housing discrimination, or an issue with the public accommodation, I, I hope you are vindicated. I hope you win. I hope what was done to you is made right. Um, I really do. Like and subscribe. It helps me to help more people just like you. Comment down below. As I said, I'll track the comments. Take care, everybody.